This is part four of section 3.5, Proofs and Set Theory. In this part, we're going to look at proving set equality. Given sets A and B, to prove that A is equal to B, we need to prove the universally quantified biconditional statement for all x, x is an element of A, if and only if x is an element of B. To prove this statement, we combine a proof by arbitrary element with a proof of the biconditional statement. To prove the biconditional, we may either use a direct proof or a proof by separate implications. In a proof by separate implications, we can use the equivalence for all x, x is an element of A, if and only if x is an element of B, is logically equivalent to for all x, x is an element of A implies x is an element of B, and for all x, x is an element of B implies x is an element of A. Now the first of the conditionals on the right side of this equivalence is equivalent to saying A is a subset of B, while the second conditional is equivalent to saying that B is a subset of A. This result then proves the following theorem. For any sets A and B, A is equal to B if and only if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. This theorem tells us that to prove sets A and B are equal, we can prove that each is a subset of the other. And this is a standard technique for proving set equality. As an example, we want to prove for all sets A and B, if A is a subset of B, then A intersect B is equal to A. We first write out the symbolic form for all A, for all B, A is a subset of B implies A intersect B is equal to A. We can start the proof using a proof by arbitrary element. Suppose A and B are arbitrary sets. We suppose the hypothesis A is a subset of B and we need to show the conclusion, A intersect B is equal to A. Now if we apply the theorem to show this equality, we need to show that A intersect B is a subset of A, and A is a subset of A intersect B. The first inclusion, A intersect B is a subset of A, was shown to hold for all sets A and B in an earlier example. So it remains only to show that the second inclusion, A is a subset of A intersect B, holds. To show this, using the definition of a subset, we need to show for all x, x is an element of A implies x is an element of A intersect B. This is another universal statement with a conditional propositional function, so we use a proof by arbitrary element. Suppose x is an arbitrary element, suppose the hypothesis x is an element of A, and we need to show the conclusion x is an element of A intersect B. Now to show that x is an element of A intersect B, we need to show that x is an element of A and x is an element of B. We're supposing x is an element of A, so that's half of what we need to show. For the other half, we can use our hypothesis. Since A is a subset of B, then x is an element of A implies x is an element of B. Therefore, x is an element of A and x is an element of B, so x is an element of A intersect B as required. And this proves our result. We can sometimes use a direct proof of the biconditional to prove two sets are equal. This is illustrated in the next example. We want to prove for all sets A and B, A union B complement is equal to A complement intersect B complement. This is called one of the two De Morgan's laws for sets. Our symbolic form is for all A for all B, A union B quantity complement is equal to A complement intersect B complement. We have a universal statement, so we'll start with a proof by arbitrary element. Suppose A and B are arbitrary sets. We then need to show A union B complement is equal to A complement intersect B complement. To show this, using the definition of set equality, we need to show for all X, X is an element of A union B complement, if and only if X is an element of A complement intersect B complement. To prove this biconditional, we're going to use a direct proof. So we suppose x is an arbitrary element, and we need to show x is an element of A union B complement, if and only if x is an element of A complement intersect B complement. So for a direct proof, instead of rewriting our biconditional as two separate conditionals, we're going to prove the biconditional all at once. By definition, x is an element of A union B complement holds if and only if x is not an element of A union B. This holds if and only if not x is an element of A union B, which is equivalent to not x is an element of A or x is an element of B. So we now have a not or a negation in front of an or statement. 
we can apply De Morgan's law and rewrite that as not x is an element of A and not x is an element of B, which is equivalent to x is an element of A complement and x is an element of B complement, which is in turn equivalent to x is an element of A complement intersect B complement. So as mentioned earlier, the second step above follows by applying one of De Morgan's laws for logical statements. Combining our results, we can then conclude that x is an element of A union B complement if and only if x is an element of A complement intersect B complement, which is what we needed to show. So we proved the biconditional by basically constructing a chain of biconditionals and logical equivalences. And so knowing that, we can then conclude our result a union B complement is equal to A complement intersect B complement. For the last part of this section, we're going to talk a little bit about the empty set. The empty set, which is denoted as a circle with a slash through it, is defined to be a set with no elements. So therefore, X is an element of empty set is false for all elements X. Now if you think about it, this doesn't really make any sense. We defined a set to be a collection of elements. And so here we are calling something a set which has no elements. And so that's just, uh, the empty set is really just a terminology, so it's not strictly speaking a set, okay, but it's more of a notation that's convenient to use. Now to prove that a set is empty, we generally do not use the definition of set equality. Instead, we use the definition of the empty set itself. Now according to the definition, a set A equals the empty set provided that for all elements x, x is not an element of A. Alternatively, for all elements x, x is an element of A is false. The next example illustrates the procedure. So suppose we want to prove for all sets A, A intersect the empty set equals the empty set. So our symbolic form is for all A, A intersect the empty set equals the empty set. We start our proof, suppose A is an arbitrary set, and we then need to show that A intersect the empty set equals the empty set. To show this now, instead of using the definition of set equality and writing this out as a biconditional statement, we're going to use the definition of the empty set. So to show that A intersect the empty set equals the empty set, we're going to show for all x, x is not an element of A intersect the empty set. So now this is a universal statement, so we use a proof by arbitrary element to prove it. We suppose x is an arbitrary element. We then need to show that x is not an element of A intersect the empty set. Now note that x is an element of A intersect the empty set means x is an element of A and x is an element of the empty set. So x is not an element of A intersect the empty set means not x is an element of A and x is an element of the empty set. And this is, by De Morgan's law, logically equivalent to not x is an element of A or not x is an element of the empty set. So to show that x is not an element of A intersect the empty set, we need to show x is not an element of A or x is not an element of the empty set. From the definition of the empty set, x is not an element of the empty set, so our OR statement is true, so x is not an element of A intersect the empty set as required. So our conclusion is that A intersect the empty set equals the empty set. An alternative approach to proving that a set is the empty set is to use a proof by contradiction, which we'll see in a later section. Now the proof in the next example is an illustration of a vacuous proof of a conditional statement. Recall that a vacuous proof of a statement of the form for all x, p of x implies q of x consists of showing that the hypothesis p of x is false for all elements x in the domain. It then follows that the conditional propositional function p of x implies q of x is true for all x in the domain and hence the universal statement is true. As an example, we can prove that the empty set is a subset of A for any set A. Our symbolic form is for all A, the empty set is a subset of A. So we start our proof, suppose A is an, empty, an arbitrary set and we need to show the empty set is a subset of A. Whoops. I guess we've got it, something duplicated there, so just skip over that. Now, according to the definition of the subset relation, to show the empty set as a subset of A, we need to show for all x, 
x is an element of the empty set implies x is an element of A. Now note that the hypothesis of this conditional propositional function is false for all elements x. By definition, for all x, x is not an element of the empty set. It then follows that the propositional function itself must be true for all elements x. So therefore, this universal statement is true, and thus the empty set is a subset of A.